One of the absolute highlights for me personally in Studio One 6 are the brand new plugin updates that we have, especially for Pro EQ, which comes in its newest iteration, Pro EQ 3. Pro EQ 3 is now finally a dynamic equalizer, which has some inherent advantages over the classic EQ and is sure to become indispensable to any mix engineer producer in no time. Let's take a look. So here from Studio One's browser, inside of the effects section, we find the Pro EQ and we just insert it onto the track by dragging and dropping in classic Studio One fashion. And now you'll notice this brand new dynamics button that we have here. And when you click on show, then you'll see these new parameters for each of the bands, except the low frequency and the high frequency cut. And those would be threshold and range. So before we had Pro EQ 3, you were only able to attenuate a frequency statically like this. For example, let's say there's a peaking mid-range frequency and the only way I can get that under control is by making the mid-range of the whole instrument dull overall. So I had to do that by hand. But now what you can do is click here on this little D to access dynamic mode and then you can just set a threshold. This means that only when the level of that frequency range is exceeding a certain limit that you're setting, that's when the cello gets attenuated. So we can use it now to control peaks instead of making the cello dull overall to fix this problem. And that's so much more transparent and so much better sounding because the instrument retains more of its original sound that way. And also ProEQ just does an incredible job at setting the attack and release exactly right so that you don't even hear it working. you just reap the benefits, which is more headroom to display other instruments that also need their frequency range better in the mix. I almost prefer using the dynamic EQ now over classic EQing nine out of 10 times. And especially because the Pro EQ 3 also features the sidechain function. This is kind of the secret sauce of all of my mixes. What this allows you to do is bring in a different instrument. Like for example, I have the saxophone playing and that doesn't really get through the cello, doesn't really cut through the mix. And instead of just making the saxophone louder, which would be the classic solution, I can go into the sidechain menu here and tell the Pro EQ that's currently sitting on the cello, hey, every time the saxophone comes in, please just attenuate the frequency range that the saxophone needs. And you can see every time that saxophone is playing, the cello is making the space in the important frequency spectrum of around two kilohertz. This also works great if you have like vocals and you wanna sit them onto a huge playback with tons of stuff going on. And it's really hard to make the lyrics understandable in the important mid-range frequencies. Then just use this Pro EQ 3 to fix all of your problems in one go. You just apply the Pro EQ 3 onto the playback bus or track or whatever you have, and then set the range to whichever frequency is most dominant in the vocal, and then set the sidechain to the vocal. And every time the vocal comes in, the Pro EQ will duck that frequency range in the playback. But as soon as the vocal stops, it stops doing that. So you can't even hear that this is actually happening. It's super transparent and everything that remains is just headroom that you're getting back. Another really nice addition to each of the frequency bands of Pro EQ 3, except low and high cut, is the solo button right here. Click here on solo, find the problematic frequency, and then just attenuate it with the classic method. Or click on this D here to use my preferred method, dynamic EQ. One of the brand new plugin additions in Studio One 6 is a dedicated de which uses the same principle as the dynamic EQ that we looked at already, but is specialized on attenuating these very sharp frequencies like S or like these crash symbols that you have sitting in the upper frequency spectrum. It does a great job at that, it's super transparent. Let's take a listen. So I have a drum loop going on here that has a very sharp crash happening right here. And I'd like to get that a little bit under control without making the drum loop more dull overall. So I just go up here to a brand new DSR plugin in the Studio One browser, drag and drop that onto the track. 
And here we have a couple of controls. So the frequency control allows us to set a range from 2 kHz and up all the way to 12 kHz and up. And this is the range that we're going to attenuate to make the higher frequencies sound less sharp in our ear. There's two controls here that help us set that frequency just right. The first one is a listen button. This allows us to audition the frequency range overall on which the VS is currently working. And solo really just lets us listen to what the DS is currently taking out of the drum loop. So ideally, we would set that in a way that we're only hearing frequencies that we don't want to hear afterward anymore. We can also select a shape wide or narrow. Wide is probably going to sound a bit more musical because it's more gentle, but narrow is more surgical if you know exactly where the problem frequency resides. Then there's the range. You can select a full attenuation beyond 6 decibels or a gentle attenuation of just 6 decibels. Gentle, of course, sounds a bit more natural, but full really goes to the bottom of the issue and surgically removes all of the problems. Let's listen to that AB without the solo button, of course. This is with the deesser. And this without, you can hear, oh, so sharp. I definitely prefer it with the DSR. It's just great to hear how transparent it is, that it's really just touching the problematic frequencies and everything else sounds just as high fidelity as it did before. One of the most popular feature requests in Studio One was the addition of a vocoder. And we've added sidechain input for instruments so that you can use any of the vocoders that you already have as virtual instruments in Studio One. But we've also added our very own take on a vocoder inside of the effects section of Studio One's browser. It's a super versatile tool that you can use on its own on any kind of drum loop, for instance, or vocal. And you can also modulate it from a synthesizer or any virtual instrument on another track. So I have the vocoder here already inserted onto my track. You can do so once again by dragging and dropping from Studio One's browser. And when you open it up, it has that super nice Craftwerk style look to it. I just love it. And I just went ahead here and inserted the vocoder onto an audio track where I currently have a hip hop drum loop. So this is the drum loop without the vocoder on it. And this is with the vocoder. It's almost like a saturation. It sounds super great. You can use this patch matrix here to shape the frequency response of the loop and mix that with a dry signal in parallel to find that perfect balance. But that's not where the fun stops. You can also click on the sidechain button here and bring in the signal of a different instrument like my tie. I have my tie sitting here on this particular track. And this can modulate the source that is already on this audio track. In this case, it would be this hip hop drum loop. And that can also sound incredibly interesting as you're gonna see in just a moment. So I have sidechain enabled here on the my tie. I have a little melody prepared. And let's check out what that sounds like together with the drum loop vocoder. Incredible, right? And that's just one vocoder plugin with a synthesizer going into it via sidechain. Who knows what this would sound like when you switch to a different virtual instrument, when you start arpeggiating or sequencing that synthesizer, or when you just switch to a different preset altogether. Um, incredible, the amount of opportunities. This is going to be a never-ending source of sound design. The popular auto filter plugin also received a nice little overhaul. It's now possible to set independent attack and release times on the envelope follower. This can have a great effect on the sound and gives you more control over the modulation overall. You can do so by clicking on auto and now you're able to set the attack and release of the follower separate. This can have a big effect on the sound, for example, when modulating the cutoff. 
So there you have it. Those are the plugin updates that we have for you in Studio One Six. We have the Dynamic EQ with Sidechain, the DSA plugin, the brand new vocoder, Sidechain instrument input, and last but not least, the auto filter, which now comes with adjustable attack and release times for the envelope.